Hey guys, Jessica Henry here. Um, just wanted to welcome you back to my studio, and it's kind of weird doing this on a Tuesday, but you know, I thought we are in sort of a plein air season, and a lot of people are doing traveling with their paints, and I thought it might be kind of a cool video to do something about um, traveling with your paints, since there are a lot of questions out there that people have in regards to what to pack, and what's legal, and what should we do because nobody wants to be stuck at the airport and have everything taken away from you. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is I've put everything together in my planner backpack that I would need for traveling domestic and international. Um, this is just if I were to carry it on. Um, a lot of people say, hey guys, a lot of people say um, not to carry your art materials on the plane, but to check them. And honestly, I've never had any problem with it. So some people might say I've been lucky, but um, I don't know. This is what's worked for me, and I'll just share with you what I've learned. And you probably should call the airport if you have any questions or reservations about that. Good to see you guys. Okay, so this is my planner backpack. And as much as I love it, and it's super durable, I would recommend something nylon or lightweight because this weighs a lot. So, <laughs> um, Maybe get a, a lighter weight one, but um, I'll start off by taking everything out and then um, I'll just talk about little things that I'm going to do when I travel overseas and when I travel locally in this country. So this is on top. I always wear my hat and I always try to pack a hat that I can scrunch way down and I don't care if it gets wrinkly. Um, I can't see you guys' comments, so I'll have to check them later when I'm done. But All right, so this is my backpack and I started out with... Um, these two little things, my passport, and this is all I carry. I don't carry a purse when I'm traveling. Uh, I keep everything in one of these. I don't bring very much. And when I'm overseas, I'll wear it like one of those body kind of belt things, and I just put everything in there. And I have a long story about why I do that, but basically everything got stolen from me once, but everything I was carrying. So definitely want to make sure to have your stuff that's important close to you. All right, so this is my backpack. I'm gonna start with the outside pockets. And uh, here, I'll lift it up so you can see it. This is a heavy duty um, canvas one. And it, it looks like a really old army one, but it's not, I just bought it. The brand is Katte, K-A-T-T-E-E. -T -T -E. I got it off of Amazon. And it's like army grade, but you can get them oh, for like $34. Somebody told me they got one for $34. It's all leather and brass and everything. But when I go to Tuscany and Ireland, this fall, I'm definitely going to buy a different one that's lightweight. Okay, so starting with the outside pockets, and these aren't really in any sort of order of how I do art, but I'll just tell you what I'm bringing. So I start out with one of these little devices you can get at Best Buy. This will charge your phone. So charge this in your hotel room. You plug it into your phone charger thing like this. Plug it in, and the little lights light up, and you're good to go when it's charged. And that way you don't run out of phone battery. Okay, so in this front pocket, I keep everything that I would need kind of right away in drawing. I get to a location, I want to do a little sketch. I've got my little tiny sketchbook. I found these at Michael's for 88 cents. So I bought a bunch of them and it's just the perfect size too. because You can fit it in your bag. It's just simple white. Oh, my kids have decorated it. <laughs> so that, and I keep my pencils in one of these cases. You don't need to, but uh, I've had a lot of them pencils break in my bag. So a little case is good. Obviously, no exacto knife. <laughs> um, my view catcher, handy. Doesn't take up any space, doesn't weigh anything. And I do keep a pen, never know. Um, what else do I have in here? Okay, I have a pencil sharpener. I haven't had one taken away from me yet at an airport, I can't imagine. Um, an eraser, pen. And then I keep one of these little things in here. This is a square in the event somebody wants to buy my planner painting I'm working on. I can plug this auxiliary and into my phone and run their credit card and they're good to go. They can take it all wet and, and you know, it's a sale. So it doesn't take up any space, so pack it. You can get them at Best Buy and then you get an app on your phone for it. All right, so in, in my other side pocket, I have um, just some essentials over here. A little tiny tube of sunblock. Some people say just buy the sunblock when you get to where you're going, but uh, it's just no big deal. Um, little tiny pack of Kleenexes. And then I keep these two little survival things, a mirror and a compass. And I have these in here for specific reasons. Say I'm out, um, I'm not gonna be deep in the wilderness because I, I just, I'm not gonna do that.
But in the event, uh, this is a good for, um, you know, flashing for survival or checking your lipstick. You don't want to be Neanderthals out in the wood, right? <laughs> and then I have a compass. Um, some people say, oh, you just use a compass on your cell phone, but I'd rather not because you never know when you're not going to get Wi-Fi or um, your cell reception, whatever. So I have learned how to use a real compass, and it's even when you're in a city or downtown, you don't have to be in the jungles. You should know how to use a compass. It doesn't take up any space. They're really cheap. Oh, and when you do buy these, I've learned, don't get one that has a bubble floating around. That's a defect, and it will affect the, the use. So learn how to use one. It might save your life, or at least help you from getting too off. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for that packet. And in this one, oh, I always bring an extra roll of tape. This is electric tape. I have another roll of masking tape in here. I, I, it's unbelievable how many times I've needed tape and I'm not that. Okay, now getting into this. I'll share with you what I, this is what I normally bring. There are other things that I usually bring when I go out plein air painting, but I'm not gonna bring those traveling uh, because they're just heavy and they're not totally essential. For example, an umbrella. I'm not gonna bring my umbrella, even just traveling domestically, because it's cumbersome and I can get away with not using it, so I won't bring it. Um, all right, so my tripod part. My uh, outdoor easel is in three components. So I have the tripod here, and then this is the top part. Um, you know, I'm just gonna set it up because sometimes people ask. So it's very basic tripod. This is from the uh, James Coulter easel, and it's um, artboxandpanel.com. Makes a really good sturdy product, and um, I like them. I, I like the smaller size because it fits in my backpack really nicely. And so that is very simple. Set up the tripod like that, and then there's a this situation here. I'm gonna just shorten this so I can walk around in here. So this goes like this, and you can adjust. You have to, if you get one of these, you just kind of have to fiddle around with things and see how it works. But this is the upper component, and these little guys slide up and down. And this is your standard tripod attachment. Just fits in this little area here, right like that. You put your canvas on here, and I'll show you that when I get that far. So in my backpack here is, this is the lower portion of my palette box. Okay, so there is the palette box. There's a little hook thing here, and it opens up like that. And paint falls out, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so it slides on the tripod, just down below. I don't think you can see it, but you get it. So that slides on like that, that was loud. And then that is my painting setup. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. Down below, on the front two legs of the tripod, I will run a bungee cord with a roll of paper towels in the middle, so I don't have to hold them. They just kind of hang down there, and that's a handy way to do that. And I will bring this traveling because bungee cords are really essential. We use them all the time. All right, then the next bulky thing in my bag is my wet panel carrier. And I love this size, eight by 10, because again, it fits in my backpack. And what I've done, and this is what, I gave it a lot of thought, what I'm gonna do, like when I travel to Tuscany, because I'm gonna be doing a couple paintings every day for about two weeks. That's a lot of canvases and panels to carry, so this is what I decided to do. In my um, panel box carrier here, you can see, I can fit like six of these eighth inch masonite panels. And right now there isn't anything on them. And they're just kind of blank like this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to cut a whole bunch of pieces of linen, eight by 10, to fit my little panels. And every day when I wanna do a painting, I'm gonna tape it down to my one panel like this, just all the way along the edge, tape it down, do my painting, go back to my hotel room that night, and just let these all of these dry. And when they're dry, I will peel the tape off of my painting and set it aside, roll those up. And so I don't have, you know, a box of wet paintings. I'll just have a little bundle of dried paintings. And I may even use um, liquid or some sort of drying material or medium to help, you know, kind of speed it up so that they dry faster. So I will use these 
just to take these down so I don't have to have all that extra weight. Kind of made sense to me. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> all right. Brushes. I keep all my brushes. I'm only bringing just the essentials, two, four, six, eight, and flat. And um, I'll bring a liner just to sign or twigs or whatever. You never know what you're going to need. Just really simple. This is just the skeleton crew. And this thing comes, um, you can order these separately, but James Coulter offers these with the art boxing panels. It's really just a PVC pipe with a keyhole in it. And there's a little um, screw sticking out of the side of my wooden box. So it slides on there and it just sits like that on the side of my easel. And it's handy. And I like that it's a little tube. I used to have the zippered pouch, but I found that it just kind of took up more space in my bag. And this just fits right in between everything. So I like the little round shape of that. All right. Now the question everybody's asking about is paints. And so what I have done here, I put all my paints in a Ziploc baggie for a couple reasons. When you are packing your bag, always put your paints at the very top of the bag because when they go through your stuff at the airport, and I, I kind of got yelled at at one airport, I put them way on the bottom. He's like, you're gonna make our life easier if you just put everything on top. So they take it out and they test the inside of the bag to see if it's whatever the chemicals are. And um, I have never had paint taken from me. I've heard horror stories. People say they take it, they, you know, whatever. Don't call them paints. You have to call them artist pigments and um because they kind of freak out at the word paint so do that and then i learned um from another experience why you want to use plastic bags see how all my paints are red <laughs> i had an explosion once it can happen um i didn't i didn't know it would and it happened to be my very expensive tube of vermilion isn't that lovely how you know murphy's law happens that way so in the course of research and trial and error, I have read that you really should take each tube of paint and wrap each one in a little wrap of bubble, bubble wrap, or you can do like foam wrap or whatever, just a quick like this, little piece of tape, and you're all set. So put all your paint in a bag like this. And if you're gonna carry your backpack, and I have traveled all over this country and never checked my art materials, I always carry them right on the plane, they will allow 37 milliliter tubes. They will not allow the big 150 milliliter tubes, like the big ones. This one's pretty much spent. So um, don't risk it with those. But the 37 millimeters, you might have an airport near you that is a stickler, so double check your airport if you're worried about it. Um, but so wrap each one. And uh, another thing that you need to do, and I will post this on my website. If you don't, uh, follow me on my newsletters, my blogs, whatever. Go to my website, jessicahenryfineart.com, and uh, just maybe subscribe to my blogs or whatever. I will put this up. This is the MSDS uh, material safety data sheet that you need to put in with your paints. It just it has all the legal information about uh, that your paints aren't or your pigments aren't actually flammable. And you can copy and paste this. I would suggest laminating it because the oils, whatever, you're just gonna mess it up. So you'll have your phone number. There's phone numbers for the Hazardous Materials Research Center if the airport is you know, worried or in a dither about whatever you're packing. So I'll put this on my blog. You can copy and paste it and uh, do whatever. Important stuff. So you'll laminate that and put it in your bag, scrunch it all down, put it in the top of your bag. If you want to bring um, your 150 milliliter tubes, what you need to do then is check your bag. And that being the case, somebody said in one of the blogs when I was researching about traveling with art materials, they said that they never had a problem with a small unopened bottle of Gamsol bubble wrapped in the middle of their suitcase. Nobody's ever taken it and the bags have been searched because they had the little tag that said this bag was searched and they never confiscated the Gamsol. So, if you want to risk it and just get a little bottle of Gamsol, it's so hard to find sometimes if you're going somewhere where they don't have art stores, um, you can risk that. And another thing I did last time I was traveling is I did check my bags because I, had, I was bringing a whole bunch of stuff. So I had one bag, a big bag of the big tubes, the 150 milliliter tubes. And then just to be safe in case they were going to take that one, I had a smaller Ziploc bag of all the same colors, just smaller tubes. Maybe it was redundant, but um, that's what I did. They didn't take either of them. So if you check your bag, 
you're welcome to bring the big tubes and palette knives. But you can't bring palette knives in your backpack if you're going to carry it on the plane. So that, I hope, covers everything about paints and turpentine. You are going to have to bring some sort of container for your turpentine Gamsol, whatever solvents you use, uh, whatever mediums. If you bring, um, if you want to bring Galkid, uh, Merge, whatever, check the flash point on those because if they are over 400, they're flammable. But most things are 140, like the um, different materials. I don't know. You just have to research. But whatever I use, I keep it really basic and simple. So um, I don't know about those other materials, mediums. I just throw in um, a poncho just in case. It's not necessary, You, but... <laughs> If you're out and you get caught in a rainstorm, it's it's nice to have. You don't want all your stuff to get totally soaked. Oh my goodness, we've reached the bottom of the bay. That's it. And, oh, optional. Since when I go to Tuscany and Ireland this fall, I am gonna be doing some nocturne paintings. And um, I bring this little guy. This is pretty cool. This thing um, clamps right above my easel. And I take the batteries out when I store it because for whatever reason this light always comes on when I pack it. So um, I take the batteries out. They just seem to corrode too. So take them. I put them back in when I'm ready to paint. And this just lights up my uh, canvas and my palette and no, none of my vision. So you can get these. This is from Sweetwater. They're music stand lights. And it wasn't very expensive. Um, AAA batteries. No big deal. And so I just fold that up and put it in my side pockets. Um, but that's it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to pack for your regular stuff because, you know, you probably got that down. But yeah, um, just keep it really simple. I don't bring a stool. I don't bring hard containers like fishing tackle boxes for my paints, whatever. I only pack just the paints that I, I know I couldn't live without. So I have my regular colors, the titanium white, yeah, cadmium yellow pale, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, Thalo green, alizarin crimson, and if since I'm going to be going overseas, I don't want to be without cobalt blue, maybe cobalt violet. I might even take like a, a permanent magenta, only because there are some colors, flowers, whatever that you can't, um, that you can't mix up. So <laughs> anyway, I hope that that's been helpful and interesting. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, some of you guys were giving me really great tips, and I really appreciate that. And I hope you all have happy, safe travels, and nobody takes your stuff. All right, thanks so much, you guys. Have a good Tuesday. Bye-bye.